Shalom and a very blessed day indeed to all of you. Hallelujah. Welcome again to our Take 12 devotion with the Holy Spirit. And so let us come to the Lord in prayer. And Father, we thank you again for this day. Lord, we thank you for your plans and your purpose shall be fulfilled in our life for this day. Lord, we welcome your presence. Lord, we welcome, Lord, your will and your purpose for this day. We bless it, Lord. It's going to be a blessed day indeed, Lord. Father, we thank you again as we open up the word. You're going to speak to us. Holy Spirit, we welcome, Lord, all that you have for us for our wonderful, wonderful devotion today. We ask in Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, we have always heard the Lord talk about peace. Remember when he appeared to his disciples, he says, My peace I live with you. And we have also talked about the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which is peace. One of the fruits is peace, the fruit of peace. And we often wonder what does this word peace really encompass in our life. Is this just a, a peace that only denotes to a, an emotional well-being? Or is it a, a peace that only speaks about calmness or the absence of strife or war? So what does peace actually mean? Now, the Bible tells us whenever we talk about peace, it is something that is more than just a, a peace of mind. It's something that is more than just a, a tranquility of the soul. But there is something more to peace. And today we want to open up the Word of God here, right? In the Hebrew, the word peace is where we get the word shalom. Shalom always speaks about wholesomeness, compassion. Completeness. There is no lack, no want in shalom. It is a, a phrase that describes completeness, a wholesomeness. So when we talk about shalom, we talk about the completeness of God in our well-being, physical, spiritual, mental well-being, emotional well-being. It speaks about the wholesomeness of health and wealth, both spiritually and also physically. And in the Greek, even though it is quite similar, but there is something a little bit extra that I want to open up and expound on it today. In the Greek, the word peace is the word irene. Now, irene speaks about being made whole, and it also speaks about being united together. So, Irene in the Greek also carries the denotations of being united or being bound together as one, being united as one. So, when Jesus says, My peace I live with you, he's actually saying, Hey, I am united with you. We are one. We are bound together as one. When Jesus says, My peace, I, I live with you, He's saying this, Hey, every part of your soul, your mind, your emotions, there is no division. That is all united as one. There is a calmness. There is no separation. There is no division. You are all one. There is a oneness. That's, that's the, the denotation of the word irene in the Greek. You are one. You are 
bound as one or it's something that is able to bind you together in unity or in fellowship so when we talk about peace we are to re to be reminded that we are one in christ we are bound to him in unity in oneness and there's also oneness and unity among us that there is an agreement do you get that there's an agreement there is an alignment and there's no division that is what peace is all about so let's go to one of the verses here that i want to show you and we start with hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 where we are called to always look upon jesus you see that he is the author and the finisher of our faith now jesus is the prince of peace right he is the prince of shalom he is the very expression of peace he is the one that bind us together in oneness to him we are one in him as he is one in us remember that and as he is one in the father we are also one together hallelujah in the fellowship together with him and with the Godhead. And Jesus bind us together in oneness in the body. So that, that there is no division. There is no separation. And we are one. We are united. Jesus gives us the oneness of soul, mind, emotion and spirit. Hallelujah. So that our heart agrees with our mind. And our mind and our heart agrees with our well-being. That we are one. Are you getting all this? So if we look upon Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. It means that Jesus knows the script of our story. He is the one who began it. And he is the one that's going to finish it. Hello? And he is the one that sees us through every page, every chapter of our life. He's the author and he's the finisher. And as we look upon Jesus, as we cast our eyes and our focus, that's what it means to look upon Jesus, all right? To envision him at all times in our heart, to set the Lord always before us, then we can rest assured. That the author will hear this, the author will bring to completion every good thing and every good plan that he has for our life. Amen. Especially when we are living in such a time where there is so much uncertainties and discouragement. And if we will take our eyes off Jesus, sometimes we can be entangled in that discouragement as well. But whenever we cast our eyes on the Lord, there is such peace that comes. Amen. Even in the midst of the storm, when Jesus rose up in the storm, he calmed the storm. Remember that. Hallelujah. So, cast your eyes upon Jesus, looking upon the Lord. He is the author. He is the finisher. He is the prince of peace. Another verse in Isaiah, and in chapter 26, verse 3, and it says here, Hallelujah, that you will keep him in what? Perfect peace. I like that one. <laughs> Whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. The Lord will keep you in not only his peace, Peace, but it says here, his perfect peace. Hallelujah. But there is a prefix condition to this verse here. This can only apply or this peace can only be appropriated to those whose mind are stayed on him. What does it mean that my mind is stayed on the Lord? It means that your mind is focused on him. You see, we live in a world today where whenever you turn on the news, it's always bad news. Am I right? Everywhere in the newspaper, in the TV channel, in the media, 
and what's happening around us today is always bad news but remember Jesus is the good news and so when we switch our channels and when we focus on the Lord that's what it means to let your mind stay on him focus on him and when you focus on him it's like now you are channeled toward the prince of peace and his peace will start to flow over you like rivers and you'll be washed in his river of peace you'll be embalmed in his perfect peace hallelujah that not only calm the turmoil or the waves within you but that peace keeps you in perfect health spiritual health that peace keeps you in his plan in his purpose and the most important that peace keeps you in his perspective and in his presence i pray you understand this it's so important that in such a time as this that we let our mind stay on the Lord or we look upon Jesus because He promised us He will keep us in perfect peace. That peace binds us together in the bonds of unity and love and oneness with the Lord, with one another in the body of Christ, with our neighbors. Oh yes, God says, love your neighbors. And that peace also binds us together in the agreement of our mind, our heart, our emotions, and our well-being. Hallelujah. Because that peace has got no rooms for disagreement, nor division. That peace brings absolute agreement and unity in our life. Amen. And so... Let the Prince of Peace come over you right now. Let His peace wash over you right now. But you have to state your mind. Switch your channels to the Lord. Amen. State your mind on Him. Look upon Jesus and He will keep you in His perfect peace. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' precious name. Amen.